Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I want to go over how to use the Arnold Curvature Node. This is found in the Hypershade. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and open up the Hypershade. Now, I already have two shaders created. One is the Car Paint, which is here, and the other one is Chrome that I increased the roughness. And what I want to do is mix these two together to be able to see the Chrome underneath the Car Paint. So if we take a look at Arnold right now, this is this is what it looks like right now. So this is the car paint, this is the chrome, and this is the one that we're going to mix together. I'm gonna press stop and minimize. Okay, so first we're gonna need is an AI mix node. So go ahead and hit tab, mix. There's the mix shader, open that up. And you see how it's got an SG node? That means that this can be rendered. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign it. Let's go ahead and select these guys. Whoops, not the floor. Right click, assign existing material, and then go to the AI mix shader. Now, if I render right now, and I'm gonna make a selection here, so it doesn't take forever to render, play, it's black. And the reason why is because there is nothing coming in to give it information. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop, because it eats up my CPU power, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix. So I have my shader here, and I'm going to assign my car paint, so middle mouse, drag, to shader one and then chrome middle mouse and drag shader two so this is very similar to photoshop where shader one is going to be the top layer and shader two is going to be the bottom layer now when we take a look at our render over here and i press play again you're going to see that it's a, a little bit of both you can see a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the chrome and I mentioned this before in the mix shader tutorial previously, but it's driven by this, by the weight. Zero means that it's going to be predominantly the car paint. And if I drag this all the way to one, it's going to be driven by the chrome. So this is important because we wanna control this using zero and one, which usually means black and white. So we wanna be able to use what's called the AI curvature tool. And the AI curvature tool takes a look at your model and finds the edges. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna hit tab and type in curve. And I'm looking for AI curvature, pop that up. Notice that it does not have an SG node. That means that it, uh, it cannot be rendered. And we wanna connect this to the mix node. So if I try to grab this red one and try to put it in the mix, notice that it goes gray. The reason why is because the mix node is driven by just black and white, while the color is driven by RGB. Click on this little plus sign, and now I can see the RGB, select this R, and drag it into the mix. So I'm gonna go over here to my render, take a look at what's going on right now, not much. And I'm also going to make this selection here, which will show me what node I have selected. So for example, if I go over here and I click on, uh oh, let me tear that off. If I select this node, it will show me the, the car paint so I can manipulate it if I want to. If I have this node, it will show me the chrome. If I select this one, it shows me the curvature. And if I select this, it will show me the mix. And you can see that just outside the edges, you're starting to see a little bit of the chrome, but I really wanna make it more dramatic. I'm gonna go ahead and select my curvature node and maybe increase my samples to five. And we can also decrease the edge or the spread or increase it. And we can also increase the threshold. So it gives a little bit more noise and a little bit of bias and multiply. So the higher the multiply, you're gonna start seeing some interesting effects. So it's probably not what we're looking for, but we are getting a similar effect, which is around the edges, we're starting to see the effect, which is exactly what we want. We wanna be able to see those edges. Cool. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, decrease my multiply a little bit. What I need is a little bit more control over my, my shader. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this and I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab and go and find a range. So this is gonna be AI range. And the range is going to give us more control over our black and white image. So let's go ahead and grab our out color, select it to the input, open up the RGB, select the R and drag it into the mix. Okay, so we have this right now and I might wanna change the multiply just a little bit so this doesn't show up so much. I don't need to have that noise coming up over here and I can always, let's see what I wanna do here, maybe. Kind of playing around a little bit. 
maybe a little bit more of the edges so I don't have so much. All right, let's go ahead and grab the range. All right, so if you never played with the range before, this will help. This was going to clamp the values together. So what does that mean? It means that I can make, if I drag this min, input min, it will make the black predominantly. Right, so you can just barely see the white outline. Move this back. And if I grab the white one, it will make it predominantly white. Right, so let's see what that looks like. So now around the edges of my model, I actually can see some of the chrome. So what it looks like is that this object got scratched around the edges, which is pretty common, and it gives me a nice little result. So it makes it look much more realistic. Okay, so let's take a look at this back, and just to kind of show you a little bit more, you can also uh, soften things by decreasing the output max, or you can make it the whole thing a little bit brighter. So that gives you a little bit more control over how much of the chrome gets revealed. So now we're seeing more chrome and also around the edges as well. So it's a, it's you still have a lot of control over it. All right, I actually kind of like the look of this. So I'm gonna go back and then minimize, take this off and render the whole thing. All right, that was a really fast tutorial on how to use the Arnold Curvature Tool. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to, that you can download this file at academicphoenixplus.com. You can also sign up for my newsletter and get pre-release content and newsletters, as well as models and other types of really interesting information. So please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video, and I will see you next time.